you start projects all the time and struggle to finish them? Me too. I think most artists do, but recently I spent five years working on my short film Watermelon Girl and I actually finished it. So in this video, I'm going to help you successfully complete your own projects through seven tips that I learned while working on my own. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'll also show you where you can get some free stuff, but let's dive in. This video is sponsored by Bloop Animation. They say the last 5% of a project takes the longest, and that's because people get stuck in this perfectionism phase. So just skip it. Let's be honest, no project's perfect anyways, and a near perfect product is better than an unfinished product. I generally see artists fall into one of two categories on this. They either get stuck on the last 5% of the project, or they get stuck on the first 5% of the project. I have tips for both of you, so determine which one you are. Now my face is boring, so we're just gonna go ahead and toss a lot of my artwork and me working over it while I talk. Tell me if this sounds like you. You begin a journey to accomplish your grand vision, you'll put everything into achieving that perfection, but along the way it'll become too much and you'll lose steam. You never finish the project, and that's because you're aiming for 100% perfection, which will make you burn out halfway through trying to achieve the quality that comes from that last 5%. If this is you, then my advice is just to aim for 95% of your vision. You'll find that it's a much easier goal to accomplish. All of my projects are 95 percenters and nobody's ever called me out on it. Maybe that's not you, maybe this is you instead. You get overwhelmed by your lack of knowledge and you quit before you even open the project. You don't get past the first 5%. And for you, I have to ask, have you heard of imposter syndrome? The idea that as an artist, you're not qualified for whatever project you're trying to work on, whether that be professional or personal. Well, here's the thing. We're all at different skill levels and maybe you need to make sure your project matches your skill level, but you are qualified to work on and finish a project and it's probably going to be a lot better than you think. So for you, you need to believe you can finish the project and just get started. It may not be the perfect project you have in your head, but getting started is part of the journey on getting to perfection long-term. Now look, I hesitate to say this because I need you to watch my tutorials in order for my business to work, but don't get stuck in a tutorial loop. Watching tutorials makes us feel productive because we're learning and you can learn a ton from watching tutorials, but learning isn't as important as retaining. And you can only retain that information if you're actually practicing it. So make sure you're not just watching tutorials, but making stuff from them as well. It becomes this weird form of productive procrastination where to avoid starting our project, we just convince ourselves we need to learn more to prepare. Then we just never actually start. So don't do that. Instead, open a project and get started. But do please keep watching my tutorials. Let's get this out of the way. If you wanna actually finish your project, you need a plan. Whether that's a storyboard, a shot list, or a to-do list scribbled on a napkin, it doesn't matter. You need a roadmap. Studies show that people who plan their projects are vastly more likely to finish them. So stop telling yourself you don't need a plan because it's boring and you don't want to do it because planning doesn't just make you smarter on your project. It will actually make you faster in the long run. Now, once you have that plan, you might think you're golden, but you're not. You can still fail here. So what you need to do is consider the 80-20 rule that you'll only get through 20%. So you should prioritize the most important task first. And that might seem obvious, but with humans in our little task oriented brains, we love the dopamine rush of completing a task and checking off a box. So what oftentimes happens is people will focus on getting all these little things off their plate because it feels good to finish them. And then they never get to the actual important things and don't finish the project. So look at your list, assume you won't get through all of it and prioritize the most important things first. Avoid the allure of the little checkbox dopamine rush. If you want to learn more a bit about the animation process, I recommend checking out bloopanimation.com, covering both 3D and 2D techniques with courses on major software like Blender, Maya, Toon Boom Harmony, and more. You can learn unique anime style animation from Dylan Gu or discover Alan Becker's secret to stick figure shorts. Plus, they offer invaluable filmmaking courses on storyboarding, editing, and even animating on an iPad. No subscription required, just one payment for lifetime access. Use code SOUTHERNSHOTTY15 for 15% off any course. Start your animation journey at bloopanimation.com. They also just released a new course on how to animate in Clip Studio Paint. So check that out. I will put that in a link in the description below, but let's get back to the video.
Now stop wasting time and start creating templates for everything. See, the thing is that as an independent animator, your top priority should be time management and templating your own content is the best way to save time. So what I recommend doing is going through your entire project and making a list of all the assets you're going to need to complete that project. I recommend breaking it down into these categories, characters, props, environments, and effects. Now, once you've done that, before you even actually start the project and putting together scenes, you should go through and start creating all of these assets that you can use. I spent three and a half years building up assets and templates before I even put together my first scene to animate on Watermelon Girl. Let me know if this is you because I hear this from a lot of artists. Do you feel like you can't complete a project because of the limitations of the hardware that you have? Well, first, I have plenty of videos on how to render faster in cycles, and I also have a lot on how to utilize Eevee. But that's not all that matters. See, here's the important part. Don't let your hardware stop you. Let it inspire you. Use what you have to the fullest and your limitations can actually guide you towards a style that's uniquely yours. Early on, I couldn't handle complex PBR textures with my computer, so I leaned into Toon Shaders. And you know what? That choice, kind of born out of necessity, shaped my entire artistic direction. So don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you can do with what's in front of you. Embrace the process, adapt, and you'll find that your creativity will outshine any hardware limitations. The most important tool is your mindset, and that's something no computer can beat. Now, when it comes to overcoming creative block, I have two suggestions. So first of all, if you are experiencing creative block, have you been digesting enough creative content? Because 95% of the time when artists tell me they have a creative block, they're not consuming enough creative content to be inspired, or they're consuming only one type of content. So if you're looking to video games for inspiration, maybe you need to look to movies. And if you're looking at artwork for inspiration, maybe you need to look at music. Get out there, consume content, check out new artists and new mediums, and I guarantee you, you'll probably start feeling the ideas flowing in soon. Alternatively, if you're stuck on more of a writer's block and you're working on a story or a short film, I recommend checking out the story circle. Now I cover this greatly in my behind the scenes video of Watermelon Girl, so I'm not gonna dive into it entirely here, but it covers the entire character's journey, giving you kind of a framework. We're looking back to this format and referencing it can really help you unblock and find out what your character needs to do next in the story. Have you ever watched a behind the scenes on the movie and just seen all these crazy storyboards and these turd quality renders and these boring edits, but then when you get started on your project, you skip all that stuff and you go to the end for the final render. Why? Because you wanna rush ahead and get to the cool part. That's the fun part for us as artists is to see the final product of what we made. But here's the reality. If you try to polish everything as you go, you'll end up redoing way more work. Trust me, I've wasted so much time and failed on my projects because of this. It's better to start by making turd quality renders and edits to block out your project. Whether it be a still render and just placing basic shots, or if you're working on a film, what this stage is, is getting your basic positions, timing, and keyframes for your characters. You're not focusing on the final animation yet, you're just getting the pacing and the flow right so that when you take it to that final polishing stage, it really works. And I recommend using viewport renders. For example, in this action sequence I worked on, everything was thoroughly edited and planned out before I moved on to any of the cool lighting, or extra effects. Viewport renders are super fast to render and they're perfect for catching mistakes early on before you get to that final phase when it's too late. If you need an editor, Blender of course has one built in, but the best free editor I recommend is DaVinci Resolve. I personally use Adobe Premiere Pro. Break up your scenes into smaller files and use an adjustable folder structure. An adjustable folder structure allows you to make edits later. For example, here I have two shots. If I decide I wanna add a shot in between these, I can easily add a letter to the end and adjust my folder structure without having to rename all the other folders. So breaking up your scene also means that when you have a file corruption on a potential project, you'll lose less of your project. So it's just a bit safer way to work. Also keep in mind some of the previous tips we have here too with templating. Re-import your scenes that you can reuse. I've re-imported so many camera shots, moves, and lighting setups from my previous projects. And the same goes for characters. Blender has an amazing action strip option, which allows you to save animations, reuse them, and mix them. 
I actually recommend the Animation Layers add-on to make this easier. For example, I can take my walking animation and mix in a turning animation on top of that and get two separate animations very quickly, just reusing what I've already broken up into other files. This cuts down on time tremendously. The longer my project went on, the faster I was actually making my scenes because I had it broken everything up. It would just import parts from all my other scenes. And by the end, I was able to actually produce shots much quicker. Lastly, I just wanna say, don't give up. I failed so many times on Watermelon Girl. I started this project three times before this final version, and I just gave up sometimes for years at a time. So I want you to know that you can complete your project if you stick to it. And what I learned from working on this project, I've shared here in hopes that it will help you successfully complete yours. Good luck on it, and I hope to see it, so please share it with me when it's complete. And lastly, I want to say that along this project, I created a lot of resources and ended up giving away some paid projects, but also some free products as well. So if you want to check out some of my free stuff, I'll link some of that below. And also, if you watch my short film, there's actually a code hidden in there that you can get 25% off any of my products on Blender Market by finding this secret character in the film and entering the time code as the coupon.